Uh, all right, let's run through the sectors here, guys. You know, the, uh, the S&P 500 on Friday hit a record all-time high and closed up uh, for the week. Uh, we did uh, upgrade the S&P to a 10-yard marker, reflecting just the overall all incredible bullishness of this market. We're aware that we're overstretched and all those kind of things. But when you're holding above the 90 EMA on momentum, you've got to reflect that. Our top ranked sector, materials, okay? And uh, the materials sector has been an incredibly good, perform strong performer here recently. Breaking out last week, we did move that up to the 10 yard marker. It's the number one ranked sector we have at Tackle Trading. Uh, so much in this space, by the way, the chemical companies are looking good. Uh, the gold mining companies are starting to play that reversal characteristic. We're seeing the likes of say like the Albemarle's, you know, or the Newmont Minings, uh, reversal characteristics coming back up the chart, those type of things. We also still like steel, you know, Cleveland Cliffs, uh, one of our favorite companies does have earnings coming up here pretty soon, but materials in general, we got it at the 10 yard marker, strongest rated sector at tackle trading on the backs of that trend. Uh, some that we kind of all got bunched up. This is where the strength of the market is, Mark. And XLF, the financial sector, I mean, guys, breakout, a lot of bank earnings started coming in. We saw Goldman Sachs crush it. We saw top line and bottom line beats across, across the board. Even traditional banks like Wells Fargo had a really, really good uh, you know, week last week, reversing, breaking out into those new high points. So financials we have at the 15 hey, Go back to Wells Fargo. I love it when you have negative market environment and a stock is fighting that. I think that relative strength. Now, I still, as a top-down analyst, don't enter uh, because, you know, I want to make sure that everything's aligned up on the thing. But I take note. I take note. So. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people took note of Wells Fargo last week. It was not on my radar necessarily, and it's taken off and shown uh, some strength there. Uh, XLI, the industrial sector, Mark, this is an area that's just been a juggernaut for a long time. We've got a 15-yard mark. No, ranking. Those, these three sectors... You know, whenever I prepare for a week, I'm always like, I go through different market scenarios. All right, what if the market takes off? Like, what if you have like, you know, the last couple of weeks? Do so I got short-term exposure that takes advantage of that? And then I would like, all right, what's on my wish list? And I'm sorry, I am a believer in the reflation trade. I think it's taken some time off. I don't think it's been hot. I think it makes too much sense. You got a hot economy, things get back to normal. I think there's another leg up in the reflation trade. I don't know if there's two legs up, but I think there's at least one leg up. And from a cash flow perspective, so these last three, and so if we had a big market dip for whatever reason, right? Let's say it spins out of control in the short term. Mm -hmm. You know, what's on my wish list? Well, a little bit of banking, a little bit of industrial, a little bit of material are one, two, and three for me, uh, the last three sectors you highlighted. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other two that I would put up there with that uh, space there, Mark, is uh, we've had uh, the tech sector, you know, made an incredible comeback uh, after, you know, being kind of pressured like the NASDAQ was, very similar pattern as the NASDAQ 100, reverted, broke out into new highs. That's at the 15-yard marker. It did catch a 10-yard upgrade. Uh, we maintained on staples, we love Staples right now. I mean, Staples uh, is, it has just been strong. It has just been strong. Uh, there's no way about it. it you know, and, and you look at it today. Once again, poo-poo day in the market. Staples holding its own. Well, let's look at help. a couple of, of the stocks in the Staples sector to kind of give Go to Walmart. an idea uh, of what we're lo looking at. And actually, let me bring this up. Here's your... 33 companies in the consumer staples uh, sector, and I'll uh, organize it based on market cap, give you a quick peek as what we're looking at from the bottom up. Uh, companies like Walmart. Hey, you will know? you just show what how you get to there if somebody sure. wanted to do that? Because I in think this would be like... Inside the newsletter at Tackle Trading, if you come down here, there's these yellow boxes, broad market sectors. So you can pick any one of them that you're interested in looking at the components on, like we were just looking at industrials. Just, and I use the control click mark, I'm a tab guy. So I've got my tabs open here. Now I can, I can filter it for all kinds of different things. You know, I, these are the companies inside the sector ETF in the S&P 500. So with industrials, then I can see the biggest components like UPS and UNP and Deer and Caterpillar all showing me incredible strength. Uh, 3M and Lockheed Martin, so on and so forth. And I did that with staples here so we could take a peek at what's going on in the staples sector. And we just like the characteristics that the biggest of them, okay, the Walmarts, the Procter & Gamble, the Coca-Colas, Coke had earnings today. We'll talk about that. Reversals off of the lows over the last month and a half. 
reversals off the lows, strength in Pepsi, re-strength in Costco, but then you still have like Altria testing a new high. Philip Morris testing a new high, Kraft Heinz, uh, Monster Energy Beverage, you know, all these kind of things. You've got pretty healthy patterns from the bottom up analysis in the market. And so that's where that sector, you know, that sector ranking, we like where it is. You know, we like uh, that 15 yard marker. We're going to keep it there until that pattern changes. It might even catch an upgrade if it continues to strengthen. This yeah, week. no, and this is one area of the market uh, because I'm not a tech guy. I'm just not. I, you know, like you're never, I mean, know, know your coach is biased. Uh, know, know the person talking to bias, and I'm just not a tech guy at all at the valuation levels that tech is at. Staples is one area that I have some buyer's remorse over the last month because I was like, yeah, yeah. But I don't think you can ignore the strength. I th- this feels like an area that has room to run. It feels like uh, Staples is an area that you look back on nine months from now and it has had a nice year. Now these, you know, Staples is never going to have this momentum clean as charts, and it can go through these long periods. But if you look, go back, go back, uh, go to yeah, go back to that period. Um, Here's your last, weekly chart. Yeah, there you go. It can have stretches, and you look at that stretch it had in 2019. You look at that stretch it had in 2019. There are time periods. There are time periods where Staples can outright trend and good old fashioned trend, a nice steady trend. And we're a little overextended from weekly moving averages, particularly that night. But if, if Staples takes some time off here and breeze a little bit, I mean, Staples can trend. And, and it feels like uh, you're going to look back nine months from now and you might not exactly like the path. It's not going to be the prettiest path. But I think you're going to like where Staples ends up nine months from now. Um, and so I'm definitely interested in some of my favorite staple plays. I mean, you go look at that Walmart chart um, and it hesitated at the 20 weekly couple weeks, which is very normal. You have a very clear resistance levels, taking some time to breathe. Give me another week. Give me another seven days. Uh, look at Pepsi. You know, and I had to, you know, deal with like CNBC, like pimping Pepsi out for like two straight weeks where they were talking about a million. Pepsi's great. Pepsi great. Beautiful support bounce it had a month ago. Uh, real, real relatives. Uh, I mean, pretty chart if it can take some time off and eventually break through that resistance level. Uh, you know, Staples overall, when you look back for a year time in 2019, had a great trending year. Mm-hmm. It, it there's it just choppy a little bit so the more th- these things breathe i just think it's not it, it's it's a boring part of your portfolio uh that you'll look back on nine months from now and you'll be like oh that, that you won't say that's the greatest thing ever but you'll be like nah not too shabby sure. not too shabby not everything in your portfolio has to be excitement a minute right no, steady trends are always uh, welcome and staples developing nicely here. We got like a lot of the charts and those components. Uh, three quick ones all at the 20 yard marker. Uh, XLC, we uh, maintained after a week of consolidation after uh, an upgrade the week before. Uh, healthcare actually caught an upgrade as it should have. It went up from, I believe, 10 yards, uh, you know, from the, 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 the 30 to the 20. And uh, that's off of the breakout here. We saw a lot of strength in the healthcare sector last week. So we did upgrade that space discretionaries caught an upgrade as well. And you'll notice very similar chart to the one tech had, you know, pressure during the month of March, back up, higher pivot low, eventually a breakout, then a breakout into the all-time high. Discretionary sitting on the 20 yard marker right now. Uh, Real estate, yeah, strong and we're bullish. We got it at the 30 yard marker, but it's a defensive area, kind of a grinder. So we've got a little bit behind. I mean, defensive area is up today. And yeah, holding up. I mean, too. defensive areas up today. Mm-hmm. And then last one, energy, our lowest ranked sector. And it's very, very simple to see all those charts I just went through. Strength, trends, breaking into new highs, a lot of components developing. Energy is just stuck in the mud right now, Mark. 
And I think a lot of people are waiting to see which way this thing's going to go. Break to the upside, obviously, is going to give clarity on a lot of those charts, uh, but we are not there yet as it is testing between this consolidation zone over the last month. Uh, that's your sector roundup uh, here on a Monday. And, yeah, as and always, one last note on energy. If crude oil continues to show strength in upward prices, at some point, energy is just going to, I mean, the momentum is going to, the sentiment is going to shift in the short term. I, it just, it can fight it in the short term all it wants. Mm -hmm. But uh, the nice thing I like about XLE, and I really like it, you got clear support and resistance areas. Uh, you want to wait for a break in the other direction? Great. You want to play the consolidation pattern? Great. It, it, it has, for traders, uh, you know, there's a lot. I, I love tight consolidation patterns a lot. Yeah, and it is uh, developing in that fashion right now.